I finished testing and looking at the CPI 2550 2500 watt power inverter along with its associated 4 gauge 10 foot cable kit and uh, my feelings on it are mixed. Uh, first of all the, uh, the packaging, the box that it came in um, I think is pretty good. It's uh, a reusable box with reusable packaging so when you're done with the inverter, done using it, you can put it back in the box and store it. Um, or you can throw the box away, of course, either one. But uh, the packaging is sufficient to keep it from damage and shipment, so the packaging I'll give, uh, give a good rating on. The uh, external appearance of it, uh, I really like it. Um, and, and it's also a functional shape. It's smaller than some of the, uh, the cheaper off-name brands. And uh, they give you uh, dual power lugs on it to give more power into it. Uh, dual cooling fans that are uh, temperature and load controlled. They have a, a, a load bar graph, power switch. They have an option for a remote on-off switch on it. I don't have the, uh, the actual cable that goes to it, nor did I reverse engineer it inside to make my own cable. I'm not really too interested in that, but uh, there is that option out there for those that are interested in it. So I really like the way that this is built. They have a, an extruded aluminum outer case along with the stamped steel bottom which is nice heavy gauge along with four mounting feet. I wish that these were uh, rubber for better damping but uh, they just have hard plastic on them. I would recommend putting some rubber in there if you're going to secure it down to a vehicle or something. But uh, the uh, extruded aluminum allows for good cooling and it's also uh, quite tough so it should be durable. A lot of the newer ones have all kinds of plastic pieces on them which uh, just insulate and scratch up so I don't especially like that. I much prefer this this older style. The features that it has is pretty minimal. Um, I mentioned the uh, the dual four gauge lugs on it, which is very nice. A lot of other ones don't have that, and it's entirely impossible to get uh, enough power to them. Remember, this thing needs 300 amps. It's impossible to get enough power to them if you don't have uh, dual lugs. Um, 300 to get 300 amps, you need four watt cable according to uh, NEC regulations. These only accept up to 4 gauge. Um, if you keep your cables very short, this should probably be sufficient. A lot of the newer ones also have uh, uh, USB ports and such on here, uh, other low voltage, maybe a cigarette lighter adapter for other accessories, that sort of thing. Um, I don't really think any of that stuff is necessary, so I don't miss it. This one has a, an old school analog bar graph. A lot of the newer ones have a, some sort of digital LCD display on here to show the output voltage, output amps, um, the watt load, that sort of thing, which is kind of nice, but uh, one thing that people forget is that displays like that take power, and this is a battery powered appliance. So if, it, that, if that display takes an extra five watts, that's an extra half amp load that I have on my batteries over here that'll probably go dead. So, I would much prefer something like this, which takes almost no power. That's how they got this thing down to, one of the ways that they got this thing down to uh, half an amp draw and no load. Which is uh, one of the reasons I bought this one, instead of some of the competing ones. Also, those displays add cost. And, uh, in most cases, this will be stuffed somewhere in a corner where you're not looking at it, so why would you pay for something that takes power, makes your battery go dead faster, and uh, makes it more expensive? That's my opinion on that. I took a look at the, uh, the inside of it to see what kind of build quality there was, and I was extremely disappointed. Uh, the build quality on this is very poor. The engineering level is, is, not, uh, is not there. Looks like it's hand assembled in a third world country with uh, poor quality control, poor processes. I would not recommend this inverter for an application in a vehicle or RV, and there's a number of reasons for that, but uh, one of them is that Looking inside of it, it's clear that uh, it is not vibration resistant. If you uh, put it in a vehicle where it's subject to a lot of vibration, I would expect some of these connections inside that are just hand soldered, some of them very poorly, to, uh, to come loose eventually and uh, cause major problems inside, maybe even a fire hazard. So I would uh, rate this thing only for, uh, for use in a static environment, not a mobile environment. And also, it looked like the, uh, the inside of it was very prone to corrosion. Vehicles typically get a lot of temper temperature cycling, which uh, stresses components, and they see high humidities, which uh, accelerate corrosion. So I would recommend this only for indoor use, climate-controlled indoor use. And uh, also when you're storing it, I would not put it in the garage or in the basement somewhere humid. Uh, keep it somewhere where it won't corrode, and it will probably last quite a while then, but uh, 
it's unfortunate that they didn't put more effort into the construction because then it would be more useful. I looked at the capabilities of it. The output capacity, it's rated for 2500 watts continuous, 5000 peak. Uh, the 2500 continuous I was not able to obtain, but uh, I'm not really going to blame the inverter itself. That's more uh, a limitation of the laws of physics. It is a 12 volt inverter, and it's just about impossible to get enough current to this thing. I have dual 4 gauge power cables to it, and I was only able to achieve about 2000 watts. I wouldn't expect it to run 2500 continuous like it says. It'll probably do it for a while and then overheat but it's supposedly temperature protected, so that shouldn't really be a problem. And uh, it did run uh, fairly heavy loads without getting really noticeably warm, so I think this would be adequate for most applications. <clears throat> the surge capability of it, they say 5,000 peak, which is completely untrue. The surge capability was only 2,000 watts in my testing, uh, and that's really going to be typical of any cheap consumer grade inverter, so I can't really fault this one necessarily for that by itself. Um, your peak rating is going to be equal to the continuous rating. Uh, but everybody does this, so everybody has to do it. They know that consumers will go to the store, look at this shiny box, see 5,000 and buy the biggest number. So this is by convention double the continuous rating, even though it's completely meaningless. So please, please only look at this continuous rating on inverters. And uh, in many cases, even the continuous rating isn't really continuous. I suspect that's true of this one also. In the manual they say it can only do this for 60 minutes, then you have to wait 15 minutes for it to cool down. So realistically it's probably 2000 watts continuous. The uh, noise level on it I think is quite good, and that's due to the uh, temperature and load controlled fans that it has. Uh, at no load it's pretty much silent, and uh, even at uh, high load it's not terrible. It doesn't sound like a vacuum cleaner like some of them do. There is a good amount of noise from it, but uh, it needs a good amount of airflow to stay cool, so I can't really fault it there. And they did put two fans on instead of one high-speed fan, so that is is nice. Uh, a lot of the uh, the less expensive or off-name ones, as soon as you plug it into a battery and turn it on, these fans run and make noise constantly and burn power constantly, draw dust into the unit constantly, which will build up eventually and cause things to overheat and corrode. So this is a much better system. I really wanted to... Uh, temperature controlled fans. These are load controlled, not necessarily temperature, but that's sufficient. The efficiency of it, it's rated for 88% peak efficiency and 83% at full load. My testing showed those numbers to be true. You'll get around 85% uh, efficiency over most of the operating range of the inverter. And uh, even at uh, a 40 watt load, a very small load, I was still getting about 60% efficiency, which is pretty good for an inverter rated for 2500 watts, I think. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, the output waveform was a modified sine wave, just like you'd expect. Um, that's not ideal. You want a sine wave, but those inverters cost a lot more, so I can't really fault it for that. And the output regulation that it had is uh, quite poor. That could be a deal killer for some applications. Uh, when you turn loads on and off, the output voltage um, goes out of spec uh, quite significantly and uh, so much so that uh, it shuts itself off. I assume because the output voltage went out of spec was way too high. Uh, it saw that as a fault condition and shut off and then restarts a few seconds later. Um, that uh, really is a sign of uh, poor engineering. They didn't put enough time to even design this thing to operate properly which uh, reflects poorly on it. And you, you open it up, take a look at it, and you can see exactly what's going on it's uh, just a very inexpensive consumer grade inverter. Now I want to make one thing clear here. I keep calling this a cheap consumer grade inverter and uh, I say that the engineering on it is poor, the assembly process is, uh, is poor, the quality is poor, um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it is reflected in the cost. This costs much much less than the good quality inverters and for some applications that may be just fine. If you're running a business and you need to uh, power your power tools off-site or something, I would not recommend something like this. It won't be reliable. Uh, it's not, probably not going to be, uh, you're probably not going to be happy with it. Uh, but uh, just for uh, an example comparison here, in my earlier video series, I modified a Smart APC 1500 UPS into a standalone inverter. And uh, that unit had excellent output uh, voltage regulation. I mean, it's perfect. It doesn't change at all with the load. Um, it's a, a very nice inverter. However, the efficiency is lower. It is sine wave, but the efficiency is lower, and uh, it's about a thousand watts. 
and those things cost about $700 to purchase. This inverter has an MSRP of, I think it's around 250 normally you can pick it up for about half that, uh, and uh, you get a lot more watts for your dollar. So, just because the quality isn't there, doesn't mean that it's uh, necessarily a bad product, because if it's inexpensive enough, that's acceptable. And I think that's the case with this one. I didn't pay a lot for it, and although I'm somewhat disappointed with it, I do think that it was worth what I paid. So, overall, this inverter, I would give uh, kind of a, a thumb sideways on it. I don't, uh, wouldn't really recommend this one, but I can't not recommend it either. There are some things that, uh, features that this one has that I think are, are necessary in an inverter like this that many others don't. One of them being the dual power lugs, the other one being temperature and load controlled fans. So, it does have some features going for it, but, uh, the quality just isn't there, and I can't recommend it for that reason. These uh, four gauge 10 foot power cables, on the other hand, I am very happy with these. I didn't cut them open to see what the oxygen content of the copper was, uh, if it's bright and shiny or corroded. But the cables are, are nice and flexible. Uh, they came with a couple extra terminal rings and heat shrink, which is nice. Um, I can't say anything bad about that cable kit. They're, they're nice cables. They're extremely flexible. And uh, also, this isn't really a, uh, a jumper cable review, but uh, these AutoCraft 4-gauge uh, jumper cables, I'm also extremely satisfied with those. Those are some nice jumper cables. I would highly recommend those. Uh, so if you have a, an inverter like this, any inverter, uh, and you want cables for it with clamps, I would buy this, uh, this AutoCraft 4-gauge cable and uh, cut the end off like I did. It worked, uh, worked really well, and that's some nice cable. The, uh, the copper inside, too, is very clean, so they use good quality copper in it. Anyway, that, uh, that concludes my review of the Cobra CPI 2550 inverter, and uh, thanks for watching.